Greetings YouTube, my name is Alex and I am the Reef Doc. And today I'm gonna to give you my long-term review of the ITC ALR1 algae reactor. Now I'm gonna talk you through what it's like for controlling nutrients, so nitrates and phosphates. I'm gonna tell you what it's like to maintain, how long you've got to empty it, all that sort of stuff, and a few other little bits that I've picked up as I've gone along. So what's it like at controlling nitrate and phosphate then? Well, I didn't have it running in this tank, actually I had it running in a 120 litre nano tank. I'll put a link in the description so you can have a look at that to see what it looks like. But I had seven fish, including a tang, I know, call the police, uh, which is quite heavily stocked in such a small tank. In terms of filtration, I had a NIOS Quantum 120 skimmer, a very small amount of live rock, and a very small amount of Ciparax. And throughout the entire time I had it running, which as I say is just under a year, nitrates never went above five parts per million, which I think is fantastic. And actually sometimes they dipped as low as three or one, uh, and I always ended up feeding quite heavily to try to get that up. In terms of feeding, I'd put in one cube of frozen a day and a couple of small helpings of pellet food. On phosphates though, I found it wasn't quite so good. My phosphates always sat around 0.11 or maybe even a little bit higher, unless I put some roophos in. And throughout the entire time I had it running, it could never quite control phosphates on its own. So simply, on nitrates, it does a fantastic job. And on phosphates, well, it probably did something, but I don't think in my experience it can control it on its own. However, Bulk Reef Supply, you've probably seen, have done all sorts of videos on Cheeto. So I'll put a link in the description to those videos and you can check them out to see what they talk about. Now I'll tell you about a few of the other bits, starting with maintenance. Since my last video, I've discovered a few nice little touches that make it much easier to remove the unit from the sump. The light stick disconnects by a plug on the cable, and that saves you having to pull the entire plug and cable out. And there are unions on the outlet and inlet connectors, so you can just unscrew those parts, which in turn means you don't have to take the water pump or outlet hose out of the sump with the unit itself. It also has a ball valve at the inlet union, so you can keep the unit full or partially full when you take it out of the sump. Although I've only ever used that when I'm cleaning the inside of the unit and I've only done that twice in 12 months. The thumb screws then come off quickly and you can stand the basket on its feet or just take it all the way out for a proper strip down. Whether the ALR1 is actually better at growing Cheeto than an open refugium, I can't say. But the Cheeto is closer to the light source and it gives better light penetration and better flow than an open fuge. So I suspect the answer might just be yes. And this is the kind of growth I'm getting regularly. I have seen some people struggling to grow Cheeto in these units, but if you are having problems with an algae reactor, it's probably insufficient flow, nutrients or photo period. And I'd like to say that it's unlikely to be the reactor. You could also try putting the reactor upstream of your skimmer and getting Cheeto from a different source. And while I've only had the ALR1, all of my comments should apply equally to the ALR2 and the ALR3. Anecdotally, I find there's no noticeable dip in performance if the light stick gets dirty or the basket gets full. It stands to reason though that it will be more efficient with more regular maintenance, but in my experience, that's not essential. And if the light stick gets properly dirty, all you need is some kitchen roll and a well-practiced wrist action. It always comes up nice and clean with fairly minimal effort. You can also do mini Cheeto removals in sump if you don't need to give the unit a full clean. Just lift the basket out a little and pull some Cheeto out of the top one or two racks. Now there are a few other points I wanted to mention and to make sure I don't forget anything, I've made a few notes. and I'm gonna summarize now the bad points and the good points and give you my overall thoughts. So the bad things, it can be a little bit awkward to take out of the sump and that does put you off cleaning. And if it puts you off cleaning and maintenance, then that is of course a bad thing because you don't get quite the best performance from it. That is particularly the case if you've got a sump with quite tall sides, much like the current range of Evolution Aqua EA Reef Pro uh, tanks. They do have very tall sides, so actually angling it out and pulling it out looks a bit awkward. And as a refugium, these things, in my experience, are no good whatsoever. I had a few Asterina starfish in it when I did the last review, but since then I've had nothing at all. No mice shrimp, no copepods, no wildlife whatsoever. And that is a real shame, but it is what it is. 
the good things then? Well, the unions in the ball valve and unplugging the, uh, the light by, by the top of the wire makes maintenance a lot easier. And actually taking it out isn't that much of a hassle if you use those. You also don't have to maintain it that often. Realistically, you only have to empty the Cheeto every couple of months or so, so it's not that much of a regular thing. And you can see through the sides of the, uh, the unit itself or the top to see how much Cheeto you've got and when it needs emptying. You can also plumb it dry and have it in your sump cabinet. That frees up space in your sump and makes maintenance much, much easier. I haven't decided what I'm gonna do with this tank, but I think that might be the way to go. And as long as you put a bit of silicon on the joins and maybe a cable tie for belt and braces, it'll be absolutely fine and you'll have no problems. Light spill. So in a normal refugium, your room gets flooded with light when the, uh, the light comes on, and that can be a bit annoying. With this, it's much, much less. And if you were gonna dry plumb it, you could even vinyl wrap it to cover up and reduce light spill even further. So it's really good at that. And finally, strands of Cheeto. On an open refugium, that is the bane of my life. The strands escape, get stuck in your skimmer intake and reduce efficiency, and they get stuck in your return pump and reduce the power on that as well. With this, I've had it for almost a year, and I've never had a single strand of Cheeto escape, thanks to the little strainer at the top. So it does a fantastic job of that and I'm really pleased with that in particular. But overall, I really like it. For all the reasons I've said, I think it's a great bit of kit, and I'll certainly be sticking with it. So if you enjoyed that video, give me a thumbs up and check out some of my other content. And until next time, I have been the Reef Dork. Thank you, good night.